All right. Um, so the last discussion had to do with education, the starting point, and what it leads to. One of the strongest uh, correlations in the United States is between, um, um, well, between education and income. Okay. So in the United States. As a, general, as a general rule, higher levels of education are positively associated with higher income, right? More education, more income. Fact of the matter is, everyone in this room and all of you know this intuitively, right? You know this intuitively. You don't need to see a bunch of data. You know this. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing this shit. Right? Let's face it. Nobody comes to college to learn anything. Okay? You didn't come here to learn anything. You came here. Ah, you didn't come. Ah, no, no, don't try to make me feel nice. Ah, don't try to make me feel nice. You didn't come here to learn. Right? You came here because you know that there's association. As you get more education, a lot of things happen in your life which are going to afford all these opportunities. Right? Now, the problem with that is that this is a largely spurious relationship, right? You don't get your little UTSA degree and walk to a bank and say, hey, I got my degree, give me some money, right? That would be a direct, that would be a direct pathway. No, what is the actual pathway? Education, yeah, it leads to higher income, but only through what? Job. Employment, right? So this relationship is largely spurious, right? Education doesn't lead directly to higher income. Education leads to higher income, but only through the pathway of employment, right? So you would expect that you get more education. That's going to lead you to a better job. It's that better job, which is going to lead you to more money, okay? The thing that happens is this. Students graduate. They get their degrees, they're excited, woo woo, I'm a road runner, oh, yeah, woo woo, I'm a road runner. Hey, I was here four, five, six years doing this, now I'm a barista at Starbucks, okay? And I had a friend, not me, but you're saying this, I had a friend who graduated from high school, and that friend of mine went to work right for UPS, right? He went to work for UPS, he was loading trucks. Now five years later, I have my four year degree. My friend's been working at UPS for five years. My friend is making, uh huh? Now he's a driver, now he's driving one of those trucks, you know, and he's making $48,000 a year driving a UPS truck. I got my four year degree and I'm a barista at Starbucks and I can't find a fucking job. Shit, somebody cheated me here. Right? Many of my students say this. And I know many of you are panicking, those of you that are graduating. Look, all I can tell you is when you go to P.F. Chang's and you're waiting on me, just be nice. I'm just kidding, just kidding. Come here, go far. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> what I end up telling students is don't panic, right? Don't panic, because here's how this works. You got the college grad, somebody with a Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, right? And you got the kid with the high school diploma. And um, sure, he, this person graduated from high school and went to work at UPS, and their earnings went up, right? While you, right, while you, you were in college, <laughs> that's you, that's your buddy, right? Five years later. Over five years, you're making the same amount of money because you've been in school. Oh yeah, now I get it, you got student debt, right? But now you're both in your early 20s, right? Early 20s. And your buddy, because your buddy's been straight at UPS for five, six years, making $43,000 a year. And you're starting from scratch and you're now a barista at Starbucks and you panic. Well, here's what ends up happening. There's this thing we've talked about in this class called the life course. Right? 
What happens as we go through our lives? The thing that's gonna happen is your buddy with the high school diploma is probably gonna top off, right? Top off. Maybe, you know, salary-wise, the salary's gonna top off. You are down here way below your buddy, right? But as you age, you're in your 30s now. Now you're in your 40s. Now you're in your 50s, right? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Your buddy's probably going to top off, right? The value of an education doesn't accrue the day you graduate. It accrues to you over the life course. And it accrues the more education you get. So that in the United States, on average, someone with a high school diploma, any ideas? Average income? Just high school diploma. No college. High school diploma. 20 to 30. Not even, not even 30. Someone in the United States, on average, with a high school diploma, depending on what part of the country, anywhere from 22 to 25,000 a year. 22 to $25,000 a year is average earnings for an individual with a high school diploma in the United States. As soon as you get a four-year degree, any kind of four-year degree, any kind, that number jumps up to anywhere from 36 to 39, right? just because you got a four-year degree, all things being equal. And that 36, right, is an average. If you get your four-year degree in like engineering, computer science, it's much higher than that. It, it's brought down by us dopey sociology majors, right? But that's okay, right? Having the four-year degree- At least we're not history majors. At least we're not history majors, that's the bright side, yeah. right? And you guys in public health, you, know, you guys in public health stand to do pretty well, because that's a big part of the labor market. So the earnings premium doesn't have it happen overnight, it happens over the life course. So once we get past education, we go to the next level of thinking about what we call earlier, read called a pathway. So you can see where the pathway that we started on, the pathway from education goes to employment. And the book calls this, um, there's employment, there's underemployment, there's unemployment. So you can be unemployed and you can be underemployed, right? Underemployed implies that you have the type of job that is not connected to the kind of skills that you have. All of it being buttressed under this label of job insecurity. Overall, in the United States, People suffer greater job insecurity. They suffer greater job insecurity when they have less education, right? So that right now in the United States at the peak of unemployment, I'm not even call it the peak, but in the past 10 or so years when unemployment was anywhere around 12 to 12%, unemployment in the United States was around 12, 13%, the unemployment rate for People without a college degree was like 17, 18%. And the unemployment with people with a four year degree was about three and a half, four, right? So you can see where job insecurity would be greatly impacted by the amount of education that you have. And we can see then same, similar types of stressors, right? Similar types of stressors that are gonna affect us. What I'd like students to do is look at the table 5-1 on page 103. Page 103. I'd like you to know that table. Have a sense of it. The book talks about it. Let me walk through it. I'm not going to show it to you because you got the book in front of you. I hope you do. This is a study that rates overall health status. It asks um, how have you felt physic how many days have you felt physically unhealthy? And the number of days that you have felt mentally unhealthy right and um, this is data from the centers the, the, from the CDC Centers for Disease Control and I would like you to understand a couple of things about that table here's the main story okay the numbers are what they are right each column shows you the length of unemployment unemployed more than a year unemployed less than a year compared to people who are employed Okay, that's the, those are the three comparison groups. And across, we're looking at self-rated health outcomes, okay? And we can see, what I'd like you to see here is an almost linear relationship. 
on every measure. So overall health status. People that reported excellent or very good. Excellent or very good overall health status. 62% of employed said they were healthy. Compared to 39, 40% of those unemployed more than a year. And then the unemployed less than a year right in the middle at about 50%. And the next one looks at physically unhealthy days and the last looks at mentally unhealthy days. And you see the same almost linear pattern. So that people who are unemployed longer report lower overall health status, more physically unhealthy days, and more mentally unhealthy days, right? So that once again, we start to see empirically in the evidence, direct pathways. Direct pathways that take us from education to job insecurity, right? If your education is, is lagging behind, that's probably gonna lead directly to job insecurity. At least it is in the United States. And that job insecurity, as you see here, leads directly to a host of negative mental health outcomes. Okay? And that takes us to the last point. The last point is captured by the next one. We're missing one final major piece of these pathways. And that is really well captured by the graph on page 127 of your book. And here's what it is. If you start off with a lack of education, that leads to job insecurity. Once again, I'm gonna tell you, the job insecurity doesn't necessarily, in its by itself per se, have to lead to negative health outcomes. There's probably something else you got a lousy education, which leads you to having a lousy job, a low paying job. What might that then lead to in an actual real world societal context? Lack of education, job insecurity, because you're not making much money. Then what happens? Then what happens? Lack of health care, that's a big one. Lack of health care because. Self-esteem. Uh, it's it's not easy. It's not. Don't get me wrong. Living, living in a shitty neighborhood. Yeah. The neighborhood context, right? The neighborhood context. So that what happens now is your education led to job insecurity. You lack income, right? You're unemployed. You're underemployed. You don't have the kind of money that someone with a higher education has. This then leads us to the neighborhood context. Okay, let's keep it simple. Keep it simple. Somebody tell me a ritzy, high buck neighborhood in San Antonio. Dominion. The Dominion, right? Ooh, the Dominion, right? So um, what might we just, dedu we don't even have to look at stats. What might we deduce about the people living in the Dominion? Somebody tell me some of the, somebody tell me some characteristics. Empirical characteristics, no, no, not that one, no. Some of the characteristics that might be reflective of the residents of the Dominion. We're not picking, probably some of you guys. We're not picking on you, but it is what it is. Uh, they have uh, security cars that drive around at night. Like, so just, in the neighborhood, yeah, just for the neighborhood. in the neighborhood, so that's, that's clearly the neighborhood context. But I want you to tell me something about the people living in those homes. They're professional, uh, most of them are like professional. What kind of jobs? Yeah. What? Medical. A lot of them. Are a lot of doctors. doctors. Spurs. Spurs players, doctors, lawyers, lawyers, realtors, everything. What's that? Realtors. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They always get the best. They get the best. Perks and so, one of the things we know that those neighborhoods are probably populated by people flipping, right? Flipping the formula by high levels of education, which in turn have low job insecurity high status occupation, high incomes, which then affords them a very positive neighborhood context like you just talked about. Little security cars driving around at night, right? Very well lit. It's, 
You know, right? Well, in the, well, well manicured. How about something?